Today on Houston Life, our conversation with TV legend and former Today Show host Kathy Lee Gifford about lending her talents to benefit local children. Plus, cheers to Wine Club Wednesday, the must-have bottles ahead of International Champagne Day. Then we're highlighting the nonprofit giving people a second chance through the power of work. Find out how they're helping Houstonians join the workforce. And dust off your lederhosen, how you can celebrate Oktoberfest with great German food, music, and of course, beer for a good cause. All that happening today on Houston Life. Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Who's ready to party? It is Wednesday, October 13th. There's lots to celebrate today besides the fact we're in the middle of the week. I'm Courtney Savala. Hi, Courtney. Hi, everybody. Cheers. I'm ready to party. How about you? Absolutely. It has been such a great day, and we have so much to catch up on, first of all. Mm -hmm. I feel like so much has happened since I last saw you and all of you yesterday. Uh, so this morning, we got up early. We drove up to Humble because it was the 11th annual Frank Billingsley Golf Tournament happening there at Golf Club of Houston. Guys, this was so great. It started with a breakfast, you know, friends, even Frank's college, like, fraternity brother was there to support. Look at all these golfers. I love it. It was so, I mean, it's a it's, great morning. A warm, but a great morning to play golf. Oh, it was great to get outside. Granted, Brandon and I don't really play golf. I was going to say, this is the first time <laughs> I've learned that you've played golf. Well, I don't. I'm not claiming I do. Uh, that's our friend Nick. You know who's really good, too? KPRC anchor Jonathan, Jonathan Martinez right there. Yeah. He is so good. So we had a lovely morning, and this all benefits Legacy Community Health. I think for a lot of folks out there with insurance, sometimes you take health care for granted, just going to the doctor for granted. Yeah. And Legacy has been a huge part of the community, filling in the gaps for people who don't have access to care. So it's very important. this uh, tournament today, it funded their school-based health care program, so young people at school can actually go visit the nurse, get things taken care of, and then get back to focusing on their studies. It really is fantastic. We are so, so glad to be included. Uh, awesome. And a great day for it as well. I'm glad you got all those pictures. We need to celebrate, though, because we were popping some bottles yesterday. Of Ghost course, Rose. we got rid of the White Sox. <laughs> See you later. There was some smack going on, of course, but we, we are focusing. <laughs> we did. We got rid of them. But we are now focusing on the ALCS as the Astros, Astros clinch the ALDS. Cheers to that. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, this is the the fifth year, is that right? Fifth consecutive year, um, and it's so great. This was a 10 to one victory over the White Sox in game four. Altuve clinched it for us. I mean, I just, I thought the timing on his home run was fabulous. Of course, he was hit yesterday. Not a lot of drama going on when he was hit, but of course, when the Sox player was, but you know, we'll just move along from that. Uh, Correa, Bregman <laughs> each hit a two run double. Um, ga game one of ALCS is Friday versus the other set of socks, the red ones. So we'll take care of them very easily too. Also, the fact that we won this series repeatedly, there are all kinds of people out there who wanna talk smack about the Strohs. And I think their track record sort of proves that they're a legit team. And uh, this year, I don't know, I think we might go all the way one more time. Absolutely. And the thing is, too, what people are and, and players are doing and fans of other teams, it, it's an easy target. I mean, unfortunately, it's always going to be there. Move along. Let these guys play. And our Astros class act, there wasn't a dog pile on the field when they won. You know, they celebrated classy, a classy way on, you know, in the field. They, a lot of the Sox fans actually stayed to watch the celebration. I mean, it, they just, they were a class act even when some of the announcers are trying to get them to go down that road they all took the high road which yeah. really represents who these players are as people and that we're ready to move on and just kind of let this this team take it and ride with it and hats off to Dusty Baker by the way the coolest skipper in all of baseball yeah. I love him. He's fantastic. We were just chatting about some of the fun uh, shirts, you know, that, I love are, that Dusty. are in his honor. We should point out the salsa, too. Braggy Bomb. Braggy Bomb Salsa. What it's better nice. way to celebrate? I know. this. It, it really is good stuff. you got to check it out. Braggy Bomb Salsa. It's delicious. And uh, I needed a little lunchtime snack. Hey, so tickets are tough to get, right? Everybody right now is like, how do Scrambling. we get tickets? Should we announce the big news, Courtney? Let's do it. 
Okay, we're gonna do it right now. What do you say we give away some tickets? Yes! You heard correctly. If you want to watch the Strohs live on the field, we are giving our KPRC2 insiders a chance to win tickets to the game. But here's the catch. Yeah. Tell them what they need to do. Well, you gotta be an insider. So if you haven't yet signed up to be an insider, it seems like a, I don't know, pretty good time to do it. Yeah. Okay, it is totally free. You can sign up, visit our website, click to Houston.com slash insider, or see that QR code up on the top right hand corner of your screen. Open the camera on your smartphone like you're about to take a picture. A link will pop up. Click on the link, it'll take you to sign up. Again, it is totally, totally free. We need to show up big, of course, for this game. It's going to be awesome Friday, but you got to be an insider for your chance to win. Okay, cheers, and cheers. good luck. I wish we were eligible to win, but you could win and take us. One Ooh, of us wouldn't anyway. that be fun? Okay, so have we seen the end of the handshake? I think so. People are still trying to shake, and I feel weird that really? I, don't, I don't do it anymore. So I still do shake hands, although I don't love shaking hands because I think it's kind of gross. Um, you know, you're just uh, considering how few people see. What do you mean? Hi, hi. <laughs> this actually happened to me before where someone has sneezed into their hand. Nice to meet you. Oh, Sorry. terrible. So Colin Furness, an infection control epidemiologist at the University of Toronto, believes that hand-to-hand -hand contact is actually not a major risk for COVID-19 transmission. But think about all of the other things that you can get. You know, cold and flu season, we always focus on washing our hands repeatedly. Studies show that the rate of hand washing in bathrooms is only about 30%. And I'm sorry, wait, only 30% of people actually, actually washing their properly hands? properly washing their hands, which, I, I mean, I think is kind of an alarmingly low number. Uh, what about, like, maybe an elbow bump? I still think the fist bump is the way to go or, or like these fine people on our on our screens i love these right people now. by the way posing for that picture I, I don't mind an elbow bump i'm just not comfortable shaking hands anymore yeah and i almost feel like i need to apologize for it but i don't know why like it's just kind, kind of, of an awkward yeah well we've been to some social events lately and my my instinct is to like reach out and grab someone's hand but i also i try to remind myself like fist bump remember tippy hedron the star of the birds melanie griffith's mom she has not been sick in like 40 years because she only fist bumps she hasn't just sound like this well, nice to meet you <laughs> <laughs> or you could pretend something's wrong with your arm and just put it in a sling there you go. Sorry, broke both arms. <laughs> Not going to have it. All right, so still to come, taco about a bad first date. And I did say taco. Why one woman's experience has gone viral. Y'all, this is a good one. On TikTok. Plus, Joe Sam is getting a taste of German tradition with this year's Oktoberfest. It is a good time. Hey, Joe. It sure is, Courtney and Derek. So you know there's a lot of different Oktoberfest activities that's happening around the city. This one here is for CompuDop. They're going to be doing something really great for the kids, and we're going to talk all about it when we come back. Ropes to everyone out there. been giggling about this story all afternoon. Okay, here's the line. Talk about a bad first date. What happened? This is great. So her name is Elise Meyer. She went viral on TikTok for sharing her horror story of a first date. I'm going to try to recap here. She went on a date with a guy she met through a dating app. Seems simple, okay. right? Myers yep. thought they were going to meet at a restaurant, but she ended up having to pick him up because he lost his keys. And from there, they ended up in the Taco Bell drive through lane, which sounds like heaven, oh, right? Oh, to me, that's like a perfect I, first date. I know. Well, she's going to pick it up. We end up at a Taco Bell. Which is fine. I'm like, dine in or drive through? And he's like, drive through. And I'm like, great, he has a plan. We get to the speaker and he just leans over and goes, I would like 100 hard shell tacos. Thank you. We get to the window. He does one of these numbers. And I'm like, did you forget your wallet? And he's like, yeah. I was like, do you need me to pay? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. I buy the 100 tacos, and I'm like, where to next? And he goes back to my house. And I was like, okay, this is happening. I'm just, I'm committed to this now. It's happening. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so this, this whole thing happened. They go back to the house. Her, the guy's dad is there. He comes over. They dump the tacos out on the, on the table. 
She spent almost $150 on the tacos. What? The three of them ate the tacos. And then the dad came over and said something like, do you want to see my studio? And she basically like grabbed all the tacos, put them in her purse and left. Said, thank you for this experience. You're never going to hear from me again. This is a real story. It's a real story. And literally <laughs> I am crying. Just her delivery and this whole scenario about how it all kind of broke down. Hilarious. The video has been viewed more than 15 million times. About 5 million are from me alone because I just keep watching it over and over again. That's a bad scenario, and I feel like a lot of people can just relate to awkward or very bad first dates. If someone can't keep track of basics like wallets or keys, though, I dated a guy once who was like, where's my wallet? Where are my keys? And I'm like, bro, I, I don't ever use those items, so I don't know. <laughs> Not I don't mine. use your wallet, so I don't know where it is. Anyway, I feel like this is a good segue to our question of the day. Lay it all out there. We want to hear from you. What is the worst first date you have ever been on? The comments have been rolling in. Gene writes in, coworker set me up saying I would like him. Showed up with a back seat full of smelly, dirty laundry. Hmm. Oh. No thanks. Okay. <laughs> Catherine writes in, he picked me up for a lunch date, got pulled over for speeding, <gasps> found out several warrants for oh, non-payment of no. tickets. He went to jail. I was stuck <laughs> in his car on the side of the road. Explain that to your boss when you call for work for a ride back to the office. Because remember, it was a lunch date. <laughs> Catherine, that's amazing. Maybe before Uber, too. How funny. Lee writes in, this young guy said he wanted to cook for me and have me over for dinner. He served cold beanie weenies on oh. a paper plate. Oh, A for uh, effort? A for effort. I think that's sweet. Listen, first dates, too. Courtney and her husband, they were set up on a blind date. We were on a blind date, and yes. And 20 years later of, you know, wedded bliss, it does work it out is. for some people. <laughs> it is. I'll share my worst blind date or set up date. That was an interesting one. It happened in Midland. Oh. It's a good one. Okay. And I can't wait to read more of your comments. Visit They're our Houston funny. Life Facebook page because you guys have us in stitches. It's Please go ones. watch Elise's video. It is so funny. But wait our till after the show. <laughs> okay. So uh, Oktoberfest. It started 200 years ago as a German wedding celebration. I didn't realize this, but today it's celebrated all over the world with food and music and of course lots and lots of beer. Absolutely. Got to have the beer. Joe Sam has a look at how this year's event will benefit children in need. Okay, Joe, where are you? Eureka Heights, right? Yeah, so I'm at Eureka Heights, and of course we had to talk about Oktoberfest here. You know I had to put on one of the hats, too. Y'all know I love my fedoras, but this is the German version of it, and it's going back for a good cause, like you just mentioned, Courtney. We're here with Joanna right now to talk about Oktoberfest. This is going to be great for everyone to come out because it is a celebration. We Absolutely. love celebrating all things German, and you really have a great time with family and friends. Talk a little bit about where they can come to celebrate. We're at Eureka Heights right yes. now. So it's actually going to be tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. at Eureka Heights Brewery. Um, please buy your tickets online. We have plenty of spots. Mm -hmm. They're not filled up quite yet at compudop.org. And it's going to be a great time. Live music, silent auction, and it's to support a great cause. And don't forget this here. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the brews that they have yeah. here at Eureka Heights. But really quickly, tell us a little bit more about CompuDop and what is going to be benefiting from this actual event. Yes, of course. So it's for underserved youth here in Houston. We've already provided um, technology to them over 150,000 across the nation. Wow. And what we do is provide technology access and education to them. We still have about 76,000 people on our lottery list to receive technology, and this event's really, really going to help us provide that technology to them. So I love that you're yeah. using Oktoberfest and this event to really give back to the community and give back to those kids in need. Looking at all of the pictures and the videos that we just saw with all of them on their computers, technology is the future, so you have to have that ready for the Absolutely. kids, right? Absolutely, yes. And we have to have this for the adults Absolutely. whenever they come. The beer is what we're talking about. When we come back, we're going to be telling you guys about the brews here, and we're going to taste some of this here. Well, I've already been tasting, right? <laughs> we're going to let Joanna taste some, too, when we come back here. For right now, we're going to send things back to you guys in the studio, but much more Oktoberfest to talk about when we return. Very, very nice. Eureka Heights, for anyone who's new to Houston, you got to check out that brewery, too. I popped a cold one from the fridge last night. One of my favorite breweries. So, so you chose a good one, Joe. Have fun out there. We'll see you in a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, switching gears now. Did you know whether you are shopping or dropping off donations at Goodwill Houston, you are helping to give many Houstonians a second chance. Here to explain how donations impact our community through the power of work is VP of Fund Development and Community Relations, Barry Parker, and the Director of Workforce Development Operations, Christina Petrossi. Welcome to both of you. 
Hi, Hi, how are you guys? Good to see you. Great to see both of you as well. And Barbie, let me first start with you. For people who don't understand the mission of Goodwill, break it down for us. Why is supporting year-round so critical for y'all? Sure. So Goodwill Houston, our mission is to provide free education, training, and job opportunities to people with barriers to employment. So either a veteran coming back from serving our amazing country, an at-risk youth, an older worker, someone that has been laid off from the pandemic, we provide services to get you back to into the workforce. Well, you know what quote comes to mind, ladies? It's that it's that old saying, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, but give a man, you know, teach him how to fish and then you feed him for life, right? So Christina, you have something called Experience Day. This is happening tomorrow. What's it all about? Yes, uh, it's our first ever since the pandemic uh, experience day tomorrow at our Meyer Lane Job Connection Center from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. An opportunity for the community to come on in, uh, experience all of our training pathways. We have about 12 different training vendors uh, on site. So they're able to walk you through what to expect with each training. You get to meet the instructor and even meet some students that have gone through the training themselves so that you are able to really uh, connect with the training that best fits you and your skills. What's interesting is we're seeing this graphic here on the screen at the bottom it says offerings, apartment maintenance, Google it support, uh, facility management. Explain all of these because there's even uh, some construction in there. These are kind of areas where people can really dive into. Yes, absolutely. They're all in demand industries right now. And we have training scholarships available and we want to invest in you and our community. So come on over and see us. Come meet our instructors. We would love to have you um, and issue some scholarships. We want to invest in you. And this really is for everyone, whether you are a young person, a veteran, maybe you have a disability, or maybe you feel like because of your past, uh, other employers maybe haven't given you a second chance. This is open to everyone. We can't stress that enough, correct? Absolutely. And what's yeah. so great too, Barbie, and uh, is that there are so many businesses out there looking to hire. They're signing bonuses and all kinds of things. We just need to get the right people in the door and match to get people in a new chapter of life. Exactly. And that's the beauty of our training pathways is we put you through the training and at the end of our training, we have a formal cap and gown graduation and an on-site hiring event. So you're able to meet with employers that are interested in hiring in the industry that you graduated in. So we can funnel you directly into employment and get that income flowing. This, I mean, this could be like a life-changing resource for so many folks out there. Let's put the event details up on the screen. It's happening tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Meyerland Job Connection Center. And again, you can see See right there on your screen this is not just about you know training folks to work in a goodwill store there are all kinds of fields that will be covered so ladies thank you so much christina petrosi and barbie parker with goodwill thanks so much for your time thank, thank you. You. you well for more information just visit goodwillhouston.org or simply call 713-692-6221 very nice everyone deserves a second chance when we come back Get ready, we're popping some bottles. Did you know, Courtney, a flying champagne cork can travel 40 miles per hour? Don't point it at your face, right? Tune in for our tasting <laughs> and even more fun facts coming up next. We are tasting true champagne, and later we are chatting with beloved TV host and four-time Emmy Award winner, Kathy Lee Gifford, about her meaningful journey to Houston for a good cause. Houston Life will be right back. Okay, what better way to celebrate an Astros win than with champagne, right? In today's wine club poured by HEB, we are featuring two bottles ahead of International Champagne Day, which is happening on Saturday. But you really can celebrate it all year, 365, all year. right? So here <laughs> to walk us through the tasting, HEB wine specialist, Ryan Robinson. Welcome back to Houston Life. It's great to see you. Cheers. Cheers. So good to be here. Thank you guys for having me, um, especially on uh, National International Champagne Day, because 
bubbles are my favorite thing in the entire world. So I'm really happy to be talking to you guys about them today. Well, we're very excited. We're happy you're here. And these fun facts, before the break, we were talking about how a wine cork can fly mm -hmm. 40 miles per hour. This is actually a serious injury. A lot of uh, op ophthalmologists and optometrists see people getting shot in the face with a cork. Yeah. So, and actually, you know, you see on uh, movies and stuff like that where the cork explodes out and the wine like pours out. You don't want that to happen. That's the opposite <laughs> of what you want to happen. Um, it's barely supposed to make a sound when you open it. Just a Right. Yeah. Yeah. Safety first, for right. sure. Don't be popping that. Uh, you know, you want to do it very um, eloquently, I guess. Gingerly, yes. right? So we Absolutely. talk about bubbles. It's really having a moment. But let's talk about champagne. What we're tasting today is true champagne. Yes. And explain that to us because not all champagne is created equally. Exactly right. So for it to be a true champagne, it has to come from the Champagne region of France, which is um, up in the northeastern area of France. And this actually combines two of my, my favorite things to nerd out about, which is wine and history. Um, so the reason that you can only call it champagne if it comes from that region is because of the Treaty of Versailles, you guys. Oh. Yeah, in Fabulous. 1911, it was written into the Treaty of Versailles that uh, it could only be called champagne if it was from that region. So here's the weird like thing about it, because you know you see those like bottom shelf, like California champagnes? Yes. America didn't ratify the Treaty of Versailles. So America can get away with it, whereas no one else in the world can get away with calling it champagne so if it doesn't come from there. So even if it's $5 on the bottom shelf, you're drinking champagne, It's folks. not, but you're not. You're not. <laughs> but that's okay. You are, but you're not. <laughs> you are, but you're not. And that's why there's bubbles from all different regions. But today, we're talking about the mother of all bubbles, champagne. All right. So the first right. one is one of our favorites, of course. Walk us through this. Piper Heidsick. Uh, so Piper Heidsick. This is a phenomenal champagne. It is actually the most awarded. Walk us through this. Piper Heidsick. Uh, so Piper Heidsick. Heidsick. This is a phenomenal champagne. It is actually the most awarded champagne in the last 100 years, so the last century. Um, uh, it even won the grand champion at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. It sure did. Uh, yeah, 2020. Cheers to that. Um, and I have some really fun little facts about Piper Heidsick that I always like to share. First of all, the very first ambassador for Piper Heidsick ever was Marie Antoinette. Oh, you're kidding. I'm not. How much fancier can you get than that? You can't. Wow. <laughs> And then my other favorite Piper Heidsick fact is it was actually the favorite champagne of Marilyn Monroe. <gasps> yes. Oh, oh everybody's so, loving that little fun exactly. fact. Exactly. So you know the, the quote, I go to bed every uh, night with Coco Chanel. The other half of the quote is, and I wake up every morning with a glass of Piper Heidsick. Well, oh. it does taste better in the morning, I'm just saying. Let's move on to this next bottle because we're tight on time. This is a rosé. Yes. So this is Colette. This is also a champagne from Champagne, France. Um, it is really gorgeous. And I think the thing that you can see really, especially in this wine, is how beautiful the bubbles are mm -hmm. in a champagne. Um, the process that they go through to make the bubbles it makes those really fine, beautiful mousse-like bubbles. Um, and it's perfect for pairing. It's completely different between the two, but this is a lovely rosé. I love the bottle. By the way, this bottle is 40, the Piper is 50, but both are great choices if you have something special to celebrate, like World Champagne, Champagne Day. Day. Uh, yeah, or the Astros win. Or the Astros. Or even just the fact that it's going to be a little cooler this weekend. I mean, cheers to that. I love <laughs> the way you think, Rand. Yeah. Rand. Thank you so much. Cheers, Ghostros. And they are a very nice bottle just to have on hand for Absolutely. a special occasion. And if you would like to join our Houston Life Wine Club poured by HEV, just visit our website to register. You're going to have access to exclusive giveaways. You'll even have a chance to be part of our virtual tastings. And as a reminder, of course, as always, you can find today's featured bottles at your... What is coming up for the news at four, including the unlikely stowaway who was discovered in one couple's luggage. Houston Life is back in two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Live. Courtney and Derek back with you on this Wednesday at 3.30. Yeah, let's get to some more of your responses from today's question of the day, which is a good one. What is the worst first date you have ever been on? Michelle writes in, I faked being sick and he stayed at my house hanging out with my dad, LOL. <gasps> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Becky writes in, he showed up drunk, then passed out at a bar. I snuck out with a good friend of mine arrive, um, arrived and put him in an Uber. Oh, okay. That's good friend. Nancy writes in, my first boyfriend invited me to go with him to the laundromat. He's been my husband for the past 40 years. Oh, my word. So 
So, so sweet. Sometimes it's the unexpected or non-traditional first date that, you know, ends up working out. Absolutely. But well, you my, had a bad one? I did have a bad one. So this was in Midland. I went to dinner with this guy. He picked me up. We went to a restaurant, but he had too much to drink and couldn't drive. And I didn't know where he lived, but I called Rachel McNeil, used to work here, to come get me so I could drive his car back home. Oh. And then we went out. It was a total disaster trying to get figure out where he lived. I'm not sure I even dropped him off in the right apartment. I just dropped him and left. <laughs> How did you find, though, his, did you look at his ID to no, figure out? No, I don't know, I didn't, but he kind of told me, and I was like, I'm not sure this is it, so I parked the car and left. You gotta be able to keep it together on a first date. Right? right? I still can't get over the guy who took his date through the drive-thru and then she paid for his 100 tacos. Listen, that whole video <laughs> is so funny. What about you? I mean, I don't know. All your dates are perfect. You're friends with all your exes, so how can you have a bad date? I'm not friends with all my exes, for the record. Um, but most of them, yeah, we are friendly. But not even a bad, nothing? You know, I need more time to think about this, okay? You're stressing me out right now. What about, what about, what was the girlfriend's name in high school? What was her name? <laughs> Tiffany, and it was fifth grade. Oh. <laughs> Details. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's check in with Andy, Christine, and Justin for a look oh, at what's coming up in four. The devil's in the details. Know, right? <laughs> in high, school. high school, fifth I just, grade. I just love that. Uh, Tiffany, uh, and, it was, <laughs> and it was fifth grade. grade. Fifth grade. For the record. Oh, it was brilliant. fifth grade. We rode bikes together because oh, it would be many, many years until we could drive. Yeah. <laughs> we used to sit in the field until... Okay. I'll tell you Let later. them take it away. <laughs> okay. So they weren't playing RCK then. No. They were just riding bikes. Yeah. It's all good. No. Uh, I feel like... Uh, Justin, I feel like you've had to have a, like a bad first date. I don't know. It's been like 20 some years since I've been single. I feel like so it's I don't been a minute. <laughs> Probably in college, I'm sure there was, but you know that. Thank God there was just no Facebook, Snapchat, or anything when oh I was in college. Oh my gosh! Yeah. One, I would not have this job right now. Because <laughs> they'd be like, "That's a good resume, Mr. Stapleton. Do you remember this picture with yeah. an ET mask on and you're duct taped to a tree? That's a right. real story, by the way. I'm only mm. laughing because it's true. What? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you that one sometime, Court. That's a good one. Oh, you've oh. told me. Oh, I have, I have I've seen this. the picture. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Forgot about that. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, my God. Moving on hey, from listen, the archives. We're usually punting this one, Justin. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Hey, you know what? Said? <laughs> Moving on. Oh, my God. Moving on hey, from listen, the archives. We're usually punting this one, Justin. <laughs> yep. Thank to you. you. Hey, you know what? Send All it to you. me, guys. I got it here. Yeah. Hey, let's talk about that cold front. Well, two fronts, actually. First one's not really a front. I'll explain it coming up at 4 o'clock. What I mean, you're like, wait a minute. Yes, it is. We got it. Well, anyway, right now, you can tell it's not here. Look at these temperatures. 92 at Bush. Nine, or 89, that is, at Hobby. Notice that the camera jiggling here at the KPRC2 studios. We've got mid-80s over Mont Bellevue. We're looking at 91 in Huntsville. Same thing out towards Katy. So summertime is here. The feels like temperatures, remember those? They're still in play as well. Feels like it's a mid-upper 90s in many spots. And what we're waiting on is this first batch of rain that's right now blasting its way across portions of West Texas, San Angelo on down towards Big Bend. That's where we've got some flash flood warnings ongoing. And some of that is the moisture that's also being pulled in from what was Tropical Storm Pamela. So all of that is heading up in towards portions of central west Texas. So we've got a few scattered showers way up west of Bryan College Station. I'll keep a watch on those. But notice this fetch of moisture really getting fed in by that steep tropical Pacific moisture. That's the stuff, the leftovers from the tropical storm. So let's go the future cast. We'll likely start to see some of that pushing through here by tomorrow morning, early afternoon. So think anywhere from around 7 a.m. to probably 2, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock that winds down. But then notice by Friday, we're still waiting on the cool air, a few scattered showers, and 90 degrees. I'm going to go 92, and we'll talk more about that at four with that 10-day forecast, but there's the front, so it will be till Friday night into Saturday when that finally moves through, as it does. Here's the payoff, guys. Look at these overnight lows going into the weekend in the mid-50s, so that is going to be some spectacular weekend weather. We've got about 48 hours of some bumps and bruises before we get into that, so we'll talk about all of those details, and of course, Andy and Christine, I've got your Astros game oh, one for yes. you. Yes. Well, on Friday, we'll talk about that. For I mean, if that's not some pumpkin spice latte weather, what is? Exactly. Ugalicious right here. We love it. Ugalicious. We'll take it. Justin, thank you. Here's a look at some of the stories we are working on for you this afternoon. In Fort Bend County, a kindergarten teacher has been arrested, accused of indecency with the child. We are learning more details about where this teacher taught and how it's being addressed by the school district. Plus, you watched it live right here on KPRC earlier this morning. William Shatner. Hollywood's Captain Kirk.
blasting off into space, becoming the oldest person to ride a rocket. Houston's only space reporter, Roseanne Aragon, will have more on the Blue Origin flight and how crucial it is in the future of commercial space travel. And here's something you don't see or hear about every day, a little dog that made its way into a couple's suitcase. They were about to embark on a flight from Texas to Las Vegas, how the stowaway was discovered, and what happened next. What? <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> I, mean, I would be like, there's a puppy in my suitcase. <laughs> but I have a lot of questions, clearly, guys. Do you get okay? double, do you get double uh, pretzels on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> we'll Just be ask. watching for that story at 4 o'clock, guys. We'll see you then. We'll see okay. you then. Well, the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation continues to make a meaningful impact in the lives of many local children thanks to a group of women honoring the legacy of the beloved First Lady. And joining us now is Julie Baker Fink, President and CEO of the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation. Welcome back to Houston Life, friend. It's great Thank to see you. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here and be with you. Thank you so much for shining the light on literacy. Well, it's critical. This is one of those things that just doesn't go away, right? I mean, the need for literacy now in our communities for our young people is so critical. Remind our viewers of your mission. Our mission is to improve lives through the power of reading. And so we really work within the community with all of the nonprofit partners and with school districts to help more children get on track uh, and be, become proficient readers by the end of the third grade. And we most recently partnered with Mayor Turner's um, Office of Adult Literacy and created an adult literacy blueprint. So we know that really tackling both the number of low literate adults who are in our community and the number of children who aren't reading on grade level by the end of the third grade, we must seek two generational approaches to really break that intergenerational cycle. And there are so many great things going on. And, and, you know, we love to read with our boys at home. I'm an avid reader. I just think that there's something special about picking up a book, whether it's with a family or just by yourself. And that's really where the Ladies of Literacy, where this gr group comes in, because it's taking a passion. And really, you, this passion can be learned. My boys had to learn to love to read. And so that's what I think they need to see us reading. We have to be role models, and this group of women, it is, they are so dynamic, they're passionate about our community, they care about children, and they are lifelong literacy lovers themselves. And so they formed um, as a volunteer auxiliary group seven years ago for the foundation, and they have grown to be a force of over 400 women. And they go out in the community and volunteer and read with kids. They've adopted um, schools that they um, enrich their lives, have done some things with programming at the schools. They've invested in um, building libraries in some of our uh, underserved areas in some of the community-based providers. And they have some innovative initiatives that I think we'll talk about in just a minute. But they're a fantastic, fabulous group of women. And it just goes to show the power of volunteerism mm -hmm. and service to others. And that goes back to President Bush's. And of course, Mrs. Bush was an exemplar, a point of light in our community for what it means and, and how we as individuals can really make a difference, even just one of us. But just think about 400 people when they come together. It's like, get out of their way. They're, yeah. they're awesome. Well, and we know that Mrs. Bush would be so proud of her legacy, the fact that you are carrying it on so well. And you just explained a little bit about how the money is used, the money that's raised. This Friday, actually, the Ladies for Literacy Guild 6th Annual Power of Literacy Luncheon featuring our very own Keith Garvin, Dominique Saxa, and, of course, Kathy Lee Gifford. Uh, that is what this luncheon really is all about, to raise money to support these critical programs. Yes, and the Ladies for Literacy Guild, while they have this amazing event and have raised over $2 million since they have started this um, effort, um, they have invested these dollars in programs that the foundation operates. But I tell you, these are some high-flying um, and innovative women. And so one of the initiatives, you'll see the photo on the screen, so these ladies came up with the thought they saw a need in our community that a lot of the public schools don't have functioning and up-to-date school libraries. Wow. And, and that they don't have uh, trained librarians. And so they saw this need out in the community and said, hey, we need to be taking, you know, and they had this, this inspiration, this vision of their own childhood, much like Courtney was talking about reflecting on her child and, and the relationships that she has with her kids. They said, you know what, we need to create a bookmobile. Well, this is a, a, this is a super mo mobile library on wheels and they're called the Curiosity Cruiser. And we partner with the Harris County Public Library. And so 
the funds from the um, F Power of Literacy luncheon have funded three. So we have a fleet. We call it officially a fleet now when you have three of them. And so you can see they're upfitted. We have a um, lending library and a, a library that kids can actually go on and pick a book and take it home and keep it to build their own home library. And then through our partnership with Harris County Public Library, their team actually goes out into communities and provides 10 to 14 weeks every week 90 minute STEM and reading programs. And we know the pandemic has had such devastating effect, probably not, probably as great as when we had World War II and the impact on education and the social emotional well-being and the academic well-being. We know we are going to need to do more for kids well beyond the school walls and the school day. And by taking these programs out into the community, right in their apartment complexes or their housing authority communities or in community-based centers, that's when we're really going to start to start to close that gap on weekends, after school programs, and of course the great work that teachers do each and every day. It really is incredible. Julie Baker Fink, we got to leave it there. We're tight on time, but thank you so much for your continued work in our community. Thank you both so much. It is great to see you. And for more information on how you can help the Ladies for Literacy Guild and, of course, the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation, you can visit our website, HoustonLife.tv. And coming up, from supporting the mission of the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation to her new book, we're catching up with TV legend and former Today host, Kathy Lee Gifford. Stay there she right is. There she looks great. Houston Life will be right back. Since leaving her hosting gig on the Today Show's fourth hour in 2019, Kathy Lee Gifford has kept busy as a writer, actress, director, producer, the list goes on and on and on. But the TV icon always makes time to support causes dear to her heart, and one of them is bringing her to Houston this week. The Emmy Award winner joins us now ahead of her appearance at the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation's sixth annual Power of Literacy Luncheon. Kathy Lee, welcome to Houston Life. It's so great to see you. You. Oh, you guys too. Thank you so much for having me. I'm looking forward to it. I loved um, Mrs. Bush so much and, and her, her beautiful husband, her, the whole family. Uh, we had the great pleasure and privilege of getting to know them, uh, you know, many years ago. And uh, so it, it, seems, it seems just right to be coming down and honoring her legacy as well as, you know, carrying it on. That's how you, that's how you honor someone. Carry on what mattered to them. Absolutely. And of course, Anna, her granddaughter, <laughs> was my colleague at, uh, at the Today Show. So it just seems right to do it. I'm excited. You left the, the show at 20. <laughs> I've been writing um, films, producing films, directing films. Um, I have a new one coming out in uh, hopefully around Easter. I've written two new books, um, at, uh, as well as the one that's about to, to come out next month. And that's the book that we're going to be concentrating on uh, on uh, Friday when I'm there for the luncheon. It's called the, the Jesus That I Know. I've never used this form before. I interviewed about 25 different individuals that I know and love who are as completely different from one another as people can be. And that's what I love about them. I can't stand cookie cutter culture any more than I can stand can cancel culture. Uh, God did not cookie cutter us to be exactly alike, and they certainly never canceled anybody out. So this book is about individuals whose lives have touched me. They're my friends, and they're all in a con completely different uh, journey in their life uh, than I am. I've got Scientologists telling their story, uh, atheists telling their stories, Sikhs, um, uh, Hindus, uh, all people that I have taken on my rabbinical trips to Israel and watched the Lord change their hearts and their lives. It's been a very thrilling experience for me. So this is, book is there. This book is about their stories. And I hope everybody finds um, mercy for people in reading their stories. It's not just, it's some very, very famous people that I've never taken on the trips with me. It's people like Kristen Chenoweth, who's been a friend of mine for years, and I adore her. It's Kris Jenner, who's just, people just know her from the Kardashians and Jenner's, not, but, She's got a deep faith walk, and people might find that fascinating. It's Jimmy Allen, the hottest guy in, in uh, country music right now, and a dear dear friend who, who lived a very, very different kind of life from the one he lives now. By the way, I think he's going to win Dancing with the Stars, but that's just me. <laughs> I think it's a fascinating book. I've never done one like this before, but there seems to be a lot of 
interest and a lot of enthusiasm for it. It's almost timely mm -hmm. in this canceled culture of ours. I could listen to you speak all day. We only have about a minute left. What do you think it is about yourself that has allowed you to connect with so many different types of people? You just mentioned cookie cutter culture and diversity and embracing and understanding people who are different. Where does that come from in you? Do you credit your faith? I credit my parents. Uh, first of all, Joni and Effie Epstein, long since with Jesus. And they said, no, no, you are made in the image of God. You be you. There's nobody like you in the world, Kathy, and that's on purpose. That doesn't make you better than any other person. Oh, thank you for telling, showing that picture. It just makes, it doesn't make you any more special, but it makes you unique. First letter in unique is you. It is such an honor to catch up with you. Beautiful as always. And of course, your new book, The Jesus I Know, will be released on November 9th. We would love to see you in studio when you get back to Houston. Oh, how kind of you. I'd love to visit you. Thank you so much. Well, we'll put some white on ice right now, <laughs> just in case. I have a little sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, KLG, great to see you. And to our viewers, if you would like to support the Barbara Bush Houston Literacy Foundation, we have shared a link on the scene on Houston Life section of our website, HoustonLife.tv. Now we're going to check in with Joe, who's in the German spirit today in honor of Oktoberfest. Hey, Joe. Hey guys, yeah, so we're inside of Eureka Heights right now. You can see all of the brews behind us. When we come back, we're going to be talking about those brews that you can check out for Oktoberfest and all the other activities that you'll be able to participate in. And it's all for a great cause. More Houston Life when we return. Welcome back here to Houston Life. We're celebrating Oktoberfest and we're doing it in a big way, a way that gives back to the kids in the community. I'm here right now at Eureka Heights. You can already see we're excited about it. Joanna, I need another glass of beer. Oh, you, of you, would you help me out with that? Yes, oh, anytime. Oh, you're such a lady. I, you know, I try. I try. <laughs> so this is something that everybody's going to be able to come and check out here Absolutely. at Oktoberfest. And you guys have a specialty beer that's made for the actual event. Yes. So we're going to be serving Von Wolfhausen beer. It is a very bready German German-based beer. Mm. It is actually Eureka's Heights' fifth year of being open, and they've supported us every year. And they have over 20 other beers on keg, and they can get you whatever you need. So you know there. what, Joanna? I mean, yeah. look at the space that we have in here. They have all the decorations up and going right now. So this is going to be kicking off tomorrow. Everyone's going to be able to purchase their tickets again. Where? They're going to be able to go to compudop.org, and you can. Purchase them right there. Okay. Invite all your friends and family. There's plenty of space. Please come on down. There's plenty of space and there's plenty of activities for people to go yes. and participate in. So you won't only be able to come and check out this amazing brews that they have on deck here at Eureka Heights, but talk about some of the other activities that people will be able to participate in. Right. So we're going to have a silent auction, a live auction, live band. We're going to have German-based food, craft beer, and get to hang out, meet some great people, and do it all for a great cause. It is going for a great cause. Yeah. Again, tell people, the organization, that this event is going to be Benefited. Yes, so it's going to be comp you dot like adopt without the A. <laughs> <laughs> and we've already talked about how amazing that organization is. It's going to be helping out kids in the community, connecting them with technology. Yes. Really, really great. So in the meantime, for all the adults like myself and Joanna, we're going to say prost. Prost. And back to you guys in the studio. Okay, for a cold beer. Very nice, show. Have fun. Well, after the break, a look at what's coming up on tomorrow's show when a local designer chats about competing on a hit reality this show. This is a very big deal. And as we head to break, let's check in with Nichelle Turner for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight, including a television icon's out-of-this-world experience. Hey, Nichelle. Derek and Courtney tune into ET tonight for William Shatner's trip to space. Plus, we're with Jamie Lee Curtis for Halloween Kills. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC2. But don't go anywhere. Houston Life will be right back. Coming up tomorrow on Houston Live, meet the self-taught local designer who made it, get this, all the way to the newest season of Bravo's Project Runway. Fantastic. Also, where you can shop for a cause. From accessories to fashion, even beauty products, I'm going to share four brands, both big and small, giving back in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'm very excited. There are some great products this year, too. 
All right. Absolutely. All right, we're going to get a final look at your answers from our question of the day. Of course, we asked, what was the worst first date you've ever been on? Let's check in with Naomi. Guy showed up late, kept flirting with someone else across the room. I leave. He didn't notice. The next day, I get an email stating he had a great time. Oh. Love okay. that. Interesting. <laughs> uh, Stephine, I believe, dude cried in his salad mm. over his ex-wife and then asked me if we could split the bill. Peace out. Oh. No, thank you. Wow, okay. Cindy writes in, went out with a guy that thought he was Rodney Dangerfield. What? He tried to talk like him and dress like him. I went to the bathroom and disappeared. Oh. Ghosting at its finest. Wow. Did you think about your bad first date? Did you, know you ever what? have one? So you... I, I did have a first date where literally the entire time uh, the other guy didn't ask me a single question. Didn't transmit ask. only. He was on transmit only as, as, yes, transmit only. So he sort of monologued to me for like two hours. Didn't ask me about my job, my family, my life, anything, right? And at the end of the day, it was like, the, I just had the best time. I can't wait to go out again. I was like, well, why? You don't even know me. <laughs> literally don't know me. It's a nice one-way conversation. He's engaged to someone else now. It, it worked out. All right. Well, let's check in with Andy and Christine for the news at four. It's always a good topic on yeah. our Facebook Is question. he engaged I, to someone else or is he engaged to himself? I was going to say, I bet his spouse is a great listener. <laughs> <laughs> so good.